All right. Do you have your hand up on harmonic grammar? Let's start with this. If we're going to be building our own progressions, which we will, all right, um, it's going to be beneficial for you to, to uh, be familiar with the chord classes and with common stylistically sound group movements, right? So we have our chord classes we talked about before, but again, tonic class is one and six, predominant is four and two, dominant five, seven, and then the cadential six, four, right? Regardless of chord position, inversion, right? Uh, and regardless of what mode you're in, whether it's a minor four chord in a minor mode or a major four or two diminished or two minor, whether it's a minor six in a major or a major six in a minor, right? The chord classes don't alter, okay? A uh, six chord is, is, is a time class chord. Uh, the dominant class chords are ones that are always going to employ the raised leading tone. Those are not going to change between major and minor mode. But we do have these, uh, all these different chord classes. And then if you take these chord classes, here's a common model that you're going to see in a lot of uh, theory textbooks, right? The tonic progresses to the predominant, predominant progresses to the dominant, and the dominant to the tonic class. Um, we need to finesse this model a little bit, mentioning, of course, the tonic chord in and of itself can go anywhere. Think of it as a queen on a chessboard, right? It can move in any direction as far as it wants. So the tonic could also go to a dominant class chord. The tonic could progress to another tonic class chord if it wanted. One can go to six. We'll get into that a little bit. Uh, in a little bit. All right? So we have that model. There is an exception here. I have a predominant class four going to a tonic chord. When it does so, it's really not moving in a predominant capacity, but rather it's functioning as what was sometimes referred to as, as plagal motion, right? Motions by fifth historically in Western music were really common, right? In fact, the term subdominant. Remember what we mentioned before? Anybody remember this? Why is subdominant called subdominant? Tyler. Because it's a fifth under the tonic. Yes, it's a fifth under the tonic. Remember, it's not because it's a step below the dominant, right? So historically, that term subdominant was referring to the dominant motion, right? That that motion that's very common. And uh, whether you know, you have to often have points of imitation historically in music up by, by fifth in the Renaissance and in, into the Baroque. And that uh, became a common movement by fifth, right? And it's just it's part of the style. Um, so that is another ascending fifth. Tonic going to five, one to five, of course, is another ascending fifth. And the other ones on this chart, as we're going to demonstrate, are going to be descending fifths. S speaking of root movements, three of them, right? Stylistically sound root movements. The, you're going to have a prevalence in uh, common practice music of movements down by fifth, down by third, and up by second. And these are referring to root movements, not bass movements, right? So if you have a, a progression right? that bass motion I played C, I'm playing in C, I played one, two, six, five, seven to one, right? bass moves up a step from F to G, you would not indicate that as an ascending second root motion. Rather, you would think of what the roots are. It's D to G. So what is D to G? What's that distance? What direction is it going? Down to fifth. Descending fifth, right. Okay, good. Um, with regards to labels, whether you call them by fourth or fifth, third or sixth, second or seventh, it's just convention to use these three, right? You're not actually going into labeling what direction the bass line is moving, you're simply abstractly describing what the distance is between those two intervals. Since the second is obviously a, a more simple way of describing something rather than a seventh, right? And the third more common than the sixth, then we use those terms. Now the fourth is smaller than the fifth, but the fifth is the more constant interval, and so therefore that's the one that we use in our nomenclature when describing uh, root movements. Okay, now here's an interesting thing. If we take our chord classes, 
right? And we go through this model, we're going to see that these uh, motions from tonic to predominant, predominant to dominant, dominant to tonic, also end up producing, for the most part, these root movements. Let's try this out, okay? So I'm just going to pick what our two tonic classes. Mario, our um, one and six. Okay, so if we were to go from one, let's just go here, one to four. I'll just keep going around here. Uh, Miles, what's one to four? What's the root movement from that? Um, yes, descending fifth. All right. Okay, so one to four. Now we try the other one. One to two. That a chord? Right? Okay, now let's do the six chord. Six to four, Nick. Descending third. Six to two. Seth? Uh, descending fifth. Okay, so all of those fit, no matter what combination we do, right? If we go from predominant to dominant, okay, four to five. Descending second. Okay, four to seven. Descending third. Four to seven. Oh, you're using normal math. Seven ah. minus four, but four. <laughs> think about four going to seven. How far is that? Oh, descending fifth. Descending fifth. Yeah. Right. Good. Okay. All right. And then two to five. Jack. Um, descending fifth. Right. And two to seven. So yeah. Descending fifth. Descending third. Okay. Lastly, uh, I don't want to melt your circuits, Tyler, so I'll do this one for you because this one's hard. Five to one, descending fifth. <laughs> okay. What's five to six? Descending seven. Okay. What's seven to one? Back to five. seven to one. Um, descending second. And then lastly, we could try this one on for size. Seven to six. What is seven to six, uh, Arlene? Descending second. Right, it's a descending second. If you go through, if you had a graduate assistant and you could do something like this, right? Tell the grad, go and and uh, go through every Mozart string quartet and Beethoven, or I mean, in every Beethoven sonata, every Mozart sonata ever written, and tell me how many seven to six motions you find. You're not going to find a lot of them, all right? So we have a model that says we had moved from dominant to tonic class which is reaffirmed by the root movements, but when we keep the root movements in mind, now we have a way of, dis of describing why, for example, a seven chord moving to a six chord is not all that common. Yeah. Wouldn't the tonic moving to dominant break the stylistically sound root movements? Yep, and the, okay, the guideline behind there is that the tonic is the sun king. So no, <laughs> the tonic can go anywhere. Right? That's right. The tonic is like a queen on the chessboard. It goes anywhere. If you took, you went over to our library and you said, okay, we're going to, because one to five is ascending fifth, we're going to remove all the music off the shelves that has one to five motion in it. That'd be the end of our tonal repertoire in our library. Couldn't do it, right? So that's a very important exception. Okay, good. Any um, questions on this so far? Yes, Nick? Um, so, just wondering. Is there like a rule for how many ascending seconds you can have in a row? Well, there is, kind of, yeah. Right, because on here I mentioned that the three chord, notice the three chord does not make an appearance in all this, right? The three chord is essentially outside of the realm of chord classes. I mean, historically it wasn't, you know, uh, Hugo Riban come up with, this, with, with a lot of these ideas and, you know, initially it was an abstraction and they You'll see a lot of the chord classes are related by thirds. One down a third five to six, four down a third to two, and originally in this model five to three, three was considered another, maybe, you know, had a leading tone in it, so it could be. But, but that was more of an abstraction, whereas this is more of a practical observation. This is what's happening in music, and it's a sort of an updated version of his philosophy. So since three is not there, I mentioned that with regards to your question because then eventually if you go one to two, then two to three, well, I could say, well, the three chords just not used that much. Um, they are used in sequences. Okay. So if you had an ascending, so like something like this, okay, if I had an extending chain, there's a three chord. Right? We're going to talk a little 
build more sequences later in the hour, actually. But um, we could use there also we could use in a, in a like a circle of this progression. Yeah. But uh, if you have too many ascending seconds in a row, then they could be problematic in right in a row, right? Yeah. Uh, but one to two is very common. Four to five is common. Five to six is common. Six to seven. That's another kind of odd one. That one's not really that common. Uh, yeah. And I mentioned that in this little sort of list of caveats here. It's not an absolutely, you know, lock tight, solid, sealed system. There's going to be some exceptions to the rule. But these, combined with these, do give us a general overview of what kind of chord progressions to use and which ones, which chord progression to avoid. Other questions on that? Okay. All right. Let's just take a look really quickly at this uh, Bach Chorale that we looked at the other day. Here we go. If I just look at the very um, opening phrase here, right? Uh, let's just start with Adam. Um, I'll do these ones, Adam, because these are hard. Here's a one, and here's a one. All right? Um, now, before we do the rest of this, let me just... like a four. Yep. And what position is it in? Root. Uh, the E is in the base. Oh, sorry, no. Uh, first inversion. Good. So we've got four, six. Okay. That goes, Daniel, to? Uh, five. Give me the chord core position as well. Uh, first inversion. Five, six. Okay. Mild. Tonic to dominant. Tonic to dominant. And then to? Uh, Melanie on the third beat of measure two. Um, um, six. Six. Good. <laughs> All right. Then the harmonies get a little bit interesting, but we'll, we're, we're gonna, it's, it, they're not completely out of the out of the blue at all. But uh, let's keep going. Out of chord. What do you have for the for the downbeat of the next measure? Four. Right. Um. There's a little bit of passing motion here, but by the time we get to this moment right here in time, uh, Arlene, so A, C, F sharp, and A, what Roman numeral is that going to give you? Um, which beat are we on? The uh, we're on the off beat of beat two of measure three. Right, where if you look up here for a second, I've kind of got a line that I just drew. Oh, okay. Through these, that moment. Yeah, right there. So is that a five seven? Or? It would be if you if you felt there was a D in it. Mm. What's what is? So it would be a mm -hmm. then it would be a seven. What inversion? Um, uh, Use A as the base note because the B B natural is as as an accident passing note. So it would be the second inversion. The second option, which is the first inversion. First inversion. Okay? And then I'll do the last one. All right? So if we look at this really quickly, we'll pull this up just a little bit more. All right? Okay. One to four. 
as a group, you can just tell me what the root widths are. Okay, four to five. Five to one. One to five. F, because one can go anywhere. Five to six. Second. Six to four. Third. Four to seven. Fifth, right, and seven to one. Okay, so you, you'll see this. And when we start writing our own progressions, you know, uh, some more, and writing our own pieces, we can use this sort of model to, uh, we can use this model extensively to uh, guide progressions, okay? Just so you know, later on when we get into to applying, uh, when we get into applied chords, secondary dominant harmonies, okay? What you essentially do is you look at the roots. So if I have a five and five, for example, right, in the key of C, the root of that is D, and then that would go to G. So if you strip away accidentals, and you strip away applied function, and you just look at it, you know, diatonically, generally you have that's a C, D, G would be an ascending second and descending fifth. It's the same type of guideline. Uh, the, the secondary dominance Sometimes will take us outside of the realm of function if you strip the accidentals on, but often they will just, you know, they'll just provide another sort of ascending second. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, an ascending second if it's a seven of something going to that chord, or a descending fifth if it's a secondary dominant. So those tend to work as well. All right, great. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Now I have a um, handout here on sequences. We can go ahead and stop that.